Hello and welcome to our lecture number five. So today we move on to our chapter two, the wave equation. So the wave equation forms the foundation of the quantum mechanics. So as I told you during my last lecture that the quantum mechanics was independently developed by developed by Schrodinger as well as Heisenberg. So they took a little bit different approaches from each other. So while Schrodinger took the approach of the partial differential equation, Heisenberg took the approach of matrices to solve uh, the theory of or to develop the theory of quantum mechanics. Now quantum chemistry because our subject is quantum chemistry we chemist we would like to take the approach of Schrodinger's partial differential equation method. So this way we will approach our quantum chemistry. So the reason that uh, the concept of matrix based Heisenberg's approach uh, was heavily dependent on mathematical understanding so which uh, we are not uh, equipped at this moment so we will uh, proceed through the Schrodinger's approach where I believe the partial differential equation would give us a better understanding because we are already in a position uh, to understand the basics of the partial differential equation. So before we go forward, so let me explain you that why this chapter uh, is termed the wave equation chapter. So the question is do we actually uh, start studying Schrodinger's uh, equation in this chapter so let's chemistry it is all about learning the properties of electrons now we have already seen that the electrons under quantum mechanics it behaves as a standing wave according to the modern physics or according to the quantum mechanics so now the point is if we have to study the properties of electrons and how electrons uh, behave inside the atoms then obviously of course since electron is a subatomic particle that we know that it follows the quantum mechanics. So the properties of electron means the properties of a quantum mechanical standing wave. So that's why quantum mechanics is often called the wave mechanics. Now before we go to the basics of the wave mechanics or the standing wave, we have to learn the wave properties. But before we go to the wave properties within the quantum mechanical domain, it is always better to learn the wave properties under classical domain. So, under classical domain, let's wonder what could be the, an example of a standing wave. So, of course, in quantum mechanics, the example of a standing wave is an electron. So, in classical physics, the example of a standing wave or in other words, it is also called a stationary wave and the example of the stationary wave is vibration of a one-dimensional string where 
the string is attached or fixed at both the ends all right now so we have a little bit long way to go first we have to understand the the physics of the vibration of a one dimensional string which is a classical model and if we understand that then understanding the properties of a standing wave in quantum mechanics would be very easy for us but in order to understand the properties of a stationary wave under classical model we have to understand a little bit basics about differential equation so especially partial differential equation so now let's quickly refresh our memory about differential equation so differential equation is mainly of two types one type is called the ordinary differential equation and another type is called the partial differential equation so how do we define an ordinary differential equation so ordinary differential equation would contain one or several derivatives of y with respect to x so where y can be expressed as a function of x in contrast the partial differential equation contains one or more partial derivatives of an unknown function with respect to two or more variables so in any way both the ordinary and partial differential equations can be of first order second order so also for partial we can have first order we can also have second order now both the first and second orders ordinary and partial differential equation can be classified as linear or nonlinear similarly here also we can classify them as linear or nonlinear and irrespective of first order or second order a linear ordinary differential equation can also be classified into of two types one type is called homogeneous and another type is called non homogeneous okay so are you with me uh, it would be a little bit clearer when we try to explain with some specific examples about ordinary differential equations first order second order a linear second order differential equation and and then with more specific examples of a homogeneous or a non homogeneous linear differential equation okay so uh, let's take a look at some specific examples so here we have some examples of ordinary differential equation so you can see those equations so let's try to find out what are the orders of these ordinary differential equations so this one is first order and this one is the second order and uh, this one third order what about this one dy dt is equal to ky square uh, of course this is first order so the question is how can i identify the order so here of course y prime means dy dx the first derivative y double prime means d2y dx2 the second derivative and so on so the order of a differential equation would contain uh, is defined as n if n is the highest order derivative of y with respect to x all right so let's look at it here for this equation y double prime so the second order derivative is the highest derivative here so this is a second order and here we have y triple prime that means the third order derivative of 
y with respect to x is the highest so this is the third order and here we have only one derivative first derivative of y with respect to t so this is the first order so now once we can identify the different orders first second and third so now let's try to see how what is the way to identify a linear ordinary differential equation and of course a linear homogeneous ordinary differential equation so let's just take a look here i have written an example of a second order ordinary differential equation okay so this is the equation now the second order ordinary differential equation can be linear if we can write the differential equation like this y double prime plus function of something x y prime plus function of x multiplied by y is equal to another function of x now if rx that means if the right hand side is equal to 0 then this second order linear ordinary differential equation is called homogeneous and if rx not equals to 0 then this is called non-homogeneous okay so similarly for first order linear equation uh, we can write like this okay y prime plus fx y is equal to rx so if we can write an equation like this this becomes a first order linear ordinary differential equation the same again if rx is equal to 0 we can call it a first order linear ordinary homogeneous differential equation and if rx not is equal to 0 we call it non-homogeneous okay so this becomes uh, an ordinary first order linear non-homogeneous equation so now the question is why are we learning this type of specific classification because if a ordinary differential equation is of first order or second order but they are linear and homogeneous then it becomes relatively easier to solve and there is a particular method to solve it and you will see that when we try to solve the case of a vibration of one dimensional string for classical standing wave we have to encounter few equations which are of second order ordinary linear differential equation which is homogeneous all right so now we will what we will try to do that we will try to solve some of these ordinary second order linear and homogeneous equation so let's practice few equations and let's try to refresh our memory so let's do this differential equation so let's try to find out its type so you see this is second order ordinary because there are no partial derivatives ordinary second order and this form tells us that this is linear and also this is homogeneous so and also there are two conditions that it says that we have to find the solution of y is equal to something when with given these conditions that y0 is equal to 0 and the first derivative of y at x is equal to 0 is minus 1. So these type of conditions when given are called boundary conditions and these boundary conditions have a very important role to play in quantum mechanics that will come to later. So now this type of problem is also known as an initial value problem 
why initial value because uh, the general uh, once a equation is given and you are asked to solve with some conditions and the conditions would give you something at x is equal to zero so those are called the initial values and this type of problem is called an initial value problem so we will be familiar with it in few minutes so anyway let's first try to solve it so how to solve this kind of equation uh, so the best method is let us assume that y of x is equal to e to the power lambda x this is a solution why this is a solution because if you take this thing and if you put the first derivative and double derivative of y with respect to x you will see it would meet the solution means meet the equation so that means this is obviously a solution but this is not a very well specific solution so we have because we don't know the value of lambda we have to find out the value of lambda so now let's see if y x y of x is equal to e to the power lambda x then we definitely find out y prime is equal to lambda e to the power lambda x and y double prime is equal to lambda square e to the power lambda x and since this is y so we can simply write is lambda multiplied by y of x and also lambda square e to the power lambda x is, is equal to lambda square y of x so therefore we can rewrite this equation as here lambda square y minus 3 y prime lambda y plus 2y instead of 2y this is 2y is equal to 0 all right now what we can do we can from this equation we can take y common and this becomes lambda square minus 3 plus 2 is equal to 0 so if we look at this kind of equation then obviously we can say that this implies that y is equal to 0 is also a solution right because if you put y is equal to 0 it would satisfy the equation but for y is equal to 0 this equation is always 0 so this solution is called a trivial solution so the trivial solution is a solution that is present always and uh, that is one of the most obvious solution but we don't give much importance to a trivial solution so let's take a look at this other part so the other part that is lambda square minus uh, sorry we, i missed a lambda here yes so lambda square minus 3 lambda plus 2 is equal to 0 this type of equation means the equation that we have got by expressing this in terms of lambda such type of equation is called an auxiliary equation okay so here we have this unknown part lambda and we need to solve the lambda so let's just clean up the board and continue the ordinary equation in terms of lambda is the quadratic equation so quadratic equation means the val the lambda would have two values means two solutions so this is a simple quadratic equation so we can write or lambda minus 1 multiplied by lambda minus 2 is equal to 0 isn't it so or definitely we can get two values for lambda so lambda is equal to 1 or lambda is equal to 2 so we have both the solutions now so therefore we now need to write the general solution so what was our general solution because we wrote, assume that y is y is equal to e to the power lambda x so now we have the two values for y so the general solution becomes y as a function of x is equal to c1 e to the power 1 of the lambda that is 1 multiplied by x plus c2 e to the power another lambda that is 2 
x so this is called the general solution and what are c1 and c2 the c1 and c2 are known as the constants of integration okay so this is called the general solution mind that this is not still the specific equation so how do i get the specific equation the specific equation is always obtained from the initial condition so the boundary conditions that were given earlier from that we can so we can have the specific solution so let's take a look at the specific solution using the boundary conditions from the initial value problem so let's take a look right here that the general solution why this is called a general solution because we still don't know the values of the c1 and c2 yet so this can be true for any values of c1 and c2 so therefore it's called general solution so how to come to the specific solution the boundary conditions would definitely help us so the first condition is y0 is equal to 0 so that means here we are going to put x is equal to 0 so the value becomes 0 so y0 is equal to 0 is equal to c1 e to the power x x is equal to 0 means 1 plus x is equal to 0 means 1 so c1 so this is our one equation equation 1 c1 plus c2 is equal to 0 now in the second equation y prime 0 is equal to minus 1 so what is y prime 0 so definitely the first derivative of this one so all uh, so the first derivative of this one is c1 okay plus the first derivative of this the 2 c2 now e to the power 2x again x is equal to 0 so this is equal to minus 1 okay so this is our equation number 2 so if we combine equation 1 and equation 2 so by solving we get c1 is equal to 1 and c2 is equal to minus 1 so therefore the specific solution becomes y of x is equal to e to the power x minus because c2 is minus 1 minus e to the power 2x so now we have a specific solution to the original second order linear ordinary differential equation so this is how we solve such kind of linear homogeneous second order ordinary differential equation so let's see how you can solve those uh, equations so the first one is this y double prime plus y prime minus 2y is equal to 0 and this is an initial value problem so this is the initial value given so your job is to solve this so let's see how you can solve now we have to solve two more uh, ordinary linear differential equation homogeneous of course one is y double prime minus ky is equal to zero and another is y double prime plus y is equal to 0 okay so while you solve this so I think in next lecture we will work out the solutions of particularly these two differential equations because uh, for our solution for the cases of standing wave means uh, the vibration of a one dimensional string we need to solve this particular type of linear homogeneous ordinary second order differential equation so that would be of our particular interest all right so please work it out and uh, we'll see you in our next lecture lecture number six till then goodbye